Good morning, Bobby. I'm going to show you some pictures that will aid you at putting your frame together with the parts that I've modified so that after assembly of this, you will never have to raise or lower your frame again as you quilt a quilt. The modified parts, as you can see, I've already installed on my frame. I'm going to point a couple of very particular things out to you. <coughs> Notice that when it's assembled, there's a hole here you're going to put a screw into after you have finished assembly and you think that it all works. In fact, you may want to do one quilt by uh, floating a top without putting, because if you put this pole in for your top, uh, normally we roll the lining on this and we have another pole in position that we roll the top onto, the top comes over the lining and we quilt. Just because of the weight issue, until you put this screw in there, you'll notice that this frame will do a little bit of this. But in the finished assembly, what you're going to do is stop that from happening by putting a screw here and also joining this piece with this by adding another two screws right here. And I'm leaving those out, but they will be in your uh, package for final assembly. I'm going to go to the other end of the frame now. And the tubes, you know how you've treated those tubes when you got them from Hinterburg for setting your original setup up, you drove some ends into it. You're going to get two new pieces of one a quarter inch thin wall conduit. You're going to drive these ends into one piece. These pieces are going to create the pole that is actually going to be the idler pole that your quilt is going to come up under and roll up onto the take-up pole. Those will be in your bag. You just need two pieces of conduit. Do be sure you check the ends of your conduit for burrs. And uh, if you have any burrs, you need to file those out before trying to drive those in. Because with those, as opposed to the originals that Hinterberg sent, there are no bolts involved because you're going to bring the bolt in from the outside, screwing into the end of the pole, into this hole located down here. I want to remind you, too, I'll walk around to this side here, that this knob which anchors this is slotted in this direction. You're going to take and move that as far towards the payout poles as you can so as to close up this crack that was created when I sawed these two sections apart. And then later you're going to join this back together with those two screws that go on the inside. Now what we're going to do, I have that end is pre-assembled with the motor mounted on it. And I'm going to have Gene help me to put the pole that will become the actual take-up pole in place that the quilt will roll on. to make an inspection of the end of the pole. Gene, pull that pole off just a little bit. Take your finger and stick it inside and find where there's a ridge in it. Okay. You see where the ridge is? Put that on with the ridge fitting into the crack. That will make it slide on easier. And then, now you'll have to have one end pre-assembled like that, and then what you're going to do is bring your other motor into position on this end. Like I said, by feeling on the inside of your tube, you're going to find the weld line, which you're going to slide the weld line into the crack. Once you've brought the motor up against there, then the other four screws can be put in place, which will secure the motor to the end support. Yes. 
You'll notice that this is adjusted so that your machine just clears the bottom of the idler pole because you're going to take your quilt when you load your quilt and go from lining pole under the idler pole and then up to the take up pole. This take up pole now will be powered by a switch. You may locate this switch anywhere you like. I will provide you with some self adhesive so that you're not knocking it on the floor, but it will have a uh, toggle switch on it that you're able to wind your quilt with that or unwind your quilt. I'm going to take a brief moment to thread up your machine. I know this is in the video, but I'm going to point out what I consider some very important parts. One, I will have given you a sponge felt for your thread tree. Be sure that you always use, with the exception of some art threads, all three of the holes in your pretension device. And make sure that you get the thread into the tension. And notice that it will pull with a good deal of resistance if it's in here properly. Make certain that you're not just appearing to be in there and it's riding around the outside. Right now it pulls very easily because it's not really in between there. It looks like it, but it isn't. Now I'm going to pull it down in there. And that's what creates the tension. You want to make sure that you do get it all the way down in there. Then, of course, the take-up lever. Thread guide here at the needle clamp and then eye of needle. Make sure that your needles go in with the long groove facing you and the indented area on the back side of the needle facing the hand wheel. All the rest of the instructions you should find in the video. I do want to encourage you, the puck that you will be getting, you're going to place it right up here on top and all of the rest of the plugs are clearly labeled so that you'll know what to plug them into. With regard to the remote pause adapter, you will need to give me a call at a later point in time so that I can talk you through the installation of the remote pause adapter. That's pretty much it, Bonnie. Good luck. Uh, this is the part that I was talking about that I didn't get, and I'm assuming you have it. I do want to make mention to you of one other thing, and that is I'm going to send you a pole break. The pole break can be used in place of the gears. And what you find is that instead of having to deal with the pole that keeps it from rolling, this acts as a clamp to clamp the two poles together so that they can't rotate. But yet, even though they can't rotate, you can turn them slightly by hand. What you're going to do to install this, after you get the poles in place, remove the nut from the bottom of the clamp, separate them, putting them on, so that this is like this and the other pole is in between there, putting the nut on the bottom. You will need, that is what's called a self-locking nut, and you'll need to draw it up so that when it is in this position, you can turn it easily, and when you bring it this direction, that it clamps tightly on this uh, outside diameter of the pole to keep the pole from rotating. Happy quilting.